Um, okay, so my name is Maria Banks, and um, I'm a project scientist on one of the CLIPS um, deliveries or missions. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so myself and um, the other project scientists for these different deliveries, we're uh, we're reaching out to the you know the wider lunar community um, to give some talks at some of these conferences. Um, we just want to create awareness of the really wonderful wide range of science investigations and technology demonstrations that are being incorporated into these landers. And so that's what I'm going to focus on today, telling you a little bit of uh, where we're going and um, what some of the different instruments are, but focusing on uh, those objectives. So um, I don't have too much time today. Whoops. Let me, okay, there we go. <laughs> um, so I just want to bring this to your attention of this uh, website that NASA is hosting and keeping updated. Um, you'll see uh, on the, on the, there's a bar in blue there at, near the top of, of the webpage um, that has the different um, NASA de designations. I'm sorry, I'm a little out of breath from running here from lunch. <laughs> um, <laughs> Um, so the different NASA designations for the different uh, deliveries. And so you can click on that and dig in for more details about uh, the different payloads and all of their, the nitty gritty of their science objectives. So I'm just gonna hit on the highlights, some of the um, top points right now to give you a sense of what we're doing. So you can uh, start brainstorming all the really wonderful investigations you're gonna do yourself with that great data. So for some of you that are not as familiar, I thought I'd start with just a little bit of intro, especially some of the lingo. Uh, you'll see on all my slides, TO, which stands for task order. And then I've, I've been using the word delivery and mission. So NASA uses the word term, sorry, NASA uses the term deliveries <clears throat> because NASA sponsored payloads are being delivered to the surface. And then the missions, uh, the mission name is, is um, created by the vendor, the CLIPS commercial vendor. So, NASA has a, a designation for each delivery, and then the commercial vendor <clears throat> creates a mission name. So I just put an example there, Task Order 19D or Blue Ghost Mission 1, are the, kind of the same thing. So just to explain that, because I know that's confusing to some people, um, and NASA refers to their sponsored instruments as payloads, so I'll be using that word. Um, and then just a quick summary, uh, deliveries are currently scheduled to land in 10 unique locations on the lunar surface with more than 50 NASA sponsored science and technology demonstrations. So it's really a wonderful um, wide range of things that are happening and going on. <clears throat> and something to think about as you're planning your own investigations is that some of these payloads are flying on more than one lander. So in other words, they're going to more than one location on the surface. Um, so they'll be doing the same types of activities, collecting similar data, but in several different locations on the surface. And then also LRO will be collecting um, complementary data from orbit from their suite of instruments um, for all of these investigations. So anyway, something to think about as you think about what things you might wanna do with this data. Um, and then this next bullet I just added because I get asked that a lot. Um, the landing site selection uh, was originally the responsibility of the vendor, and then as, as uh, the CLIPS program has progressed, they've made that now the responsibility of NASA down to choosing the location of that 100 meter diameter ellipse. Um, and so that's now selected before the commercial vendors even uh, propose. Um, and each lander has a retroreflector. Okay, and then just real quick, this is a list of all 14, uh, the original 14 companies eligible to propose to the CLIPS task orders. And then on the right there, um, I have the four CLIPS vendors that currently have contracts, which are Intuitive Machines, Astrobotic, Firefly, Aerospace, and Draper. Okay, so let's dig in with the time I have left. Um, so this is the map of where these CLIPS landers are going. And I'm gonna go through this kind of separated out by year. So still targeted to launch this year, later this year is TO2AB, so that's for Astrobotic. Uh, the mission name is Peregrine Mission 1. Um, and this is land going to the Mare surrounding the Gruthizen domes. And so there is a CLIPS lander headed towards the top of one of those domes, which Carrie's gonna talk about in a little bit. Um, so hopefully we can get some complementary measurements from the Mare surrounding the domes. Um, and so there's a bunch of spectrometers on this lander exploring the luno ex lunar exosphere and gases released by the regolith looking at the thermal properties of the lunar regolith, um, examining the volatile abundance and composite composition in that near subsurface, and also looking at the radiation environment. Uh, so TO2IM, this is Intuitive, Intuitive Machines Mission 1. So this is our first CLIPS lander headed to the South Polar region. So there's a set of cameras that are looking at plume surface interactions, 
Um, there's a low frequency radio astronomy receiver system, a technology demonstration looking at precision navigation technologies through Doppler radar, a communication and navigation node for future autonomous navigation and technologies. And then uh, Prime One, this is our eclipse lander that's headed closest to the South Pole, uh, targeting the uh, connecting ridge. So Prime One um, is primarily consisting of uh, the Trident Dell, which is paired with a spectrometer, a mass spectrometer called M-SOLO. So it'll be extracting regolith up to one meter below the surface and analyzing the composition of those samples for water and other components. So also on this lander, um, they are uh, testing a 4G LTE wireless network. And there's a, a micro hopper, micro Nova, the SP hopper, which um, there's a talk that we'll be talking about this later in this session. So I'll let them speak more to that. Okay, so heading into next year, 2024. So I already mentioned 19D or Blue Ghost Mission 1 that's headed to Mari Chrysium. There are 10 payloads on this, uh, this lander. This is, this is my uh, delivery, I'm happy to say. Um, <laughs> so it's been a lot of fun working with these payloads. Um, but the wide range of things they're doing, um, investigating the heat flow of the lunar interior, uh, those same cameras looking at the plume surface interactions on the lander, um, testing regular sampling, te sampling technologies, acquiring X-ray images of Earth's magnetosphere, um, and constraining the temperature and structure of the thermal evolution of the moon, studying the crustal electric and magnetic fields. Uh, doing a bunch of things with dust, dust adherence on different materials and performing dust mitigation experiments using electrodynamic fields, um, testing a radiation tolerant computer system, um, and then also investigating the first use of uh, GNSS in transit, both in transit to the moon and also on the lunar surface. And this is, I'm happy to say, a collaboration between NASA and the Italian Space Agency. Um, so then our first Eclipse Prison instrument suite headed towards the moon is it's headed towards Reiner Gamma on Intuitive Missions, sorry, Intuitive Machines Mission 3. And so that has a suite of instruments designed to investigate the origin of lunar magnetic anomalies and lunar swirls, in particular looking at the properties of the Reiner Gamma swirl and its mini magnetosphere. Um, and also on this lander is going to be a technology demonstration of a swarm of robotics. Um, so these are small autonomous rovers that have GPRs on them, it's called Cadre. Um, we also have two international payloads, uh, one from Korea, which is a high energy particle detector. So it's monitoring the near, su near surface space environment. And ESA is providing a, uh, a large lunar laser retroreflector. Um, many of you are probably familiar with Viper or Griffin Mission 1, um, which is a solar battery powered uh, rover, which will operate over multiple lunar days um, and can travel in and out of PSRs. And so the overarching goal of Viper is to characterize the distribution of water and volatiles across a range of thermal environments and evaluate the ISRU potential at that south pole. So that's the, it has a Trident drill paired with M Solar, which I talked about on. Um, Prime One, and also um, NSS and Nervous, those are two instruments that are also flying on that TO2AB, that Peregrine Mission One. Um, okay, in 2025, we have two deliveries going to the lunar far side. So um, probably about 20 degrees latitude on the far side is uh, TOCS3, that stands for Eclipse Science 3, or Blue Ghost Mission 2. And so that's Lucy Knight, which will be doing some low frequency radio astronomy with uh, standalone operations through the night. Um, and that also is a subject of future talks in this session, so I'll let them talk more about that. Um, but I'll also point out there's a lunar pathfinder orbiter that is being sponsored by ESA that will be part of this. Um, another CLIPS, um, two, two PRISM suites, uh, the Farside Seismic Suite um, is headed towards the outer ring of Schrodinger Basin and TOCP2, this is Draper um, and their Series 2 lander. It says two seismometers that are designed to study tectonic activity on the moon and micrometeorite impact flux. Um, and then another um, prism suites, which investigating the heat flow and electrical conductivity of the lunar interior. And also Lucy Light, which again, I think is gonna be talked about a little bit later in this session. And then these are the last two that I'm gonna to refer to. Um, so uh, CP21, um, so this doesn't have a mission name yet because uh, the vendor has not, the vendors haven't proposed or been selected yet. So this is Lunar Vice. Um, and so that just the overarching goal is to investigate the composition and origin of the domes. And as I mentioned, Carrie Donaldson is gonna be talking about that a little bit later in more detail. Also on this lander, the Heimdall Imaging Suite, 
um, a technology demonstration of a robotic arm. And again, that, that low frequency radio astronomy receiver system that's flying on two of machines one um, will also be flying on this lander. And the last one I'll mention is CP22. Um, I had the pleasure of working with these uh, payload teams in selecting our landing site just as recently as last week. And uh, Prospect, which is um, sponsored by ESA, there's some talks about that later this session also, um, but also the Prism, uh, Prism Instrument Suite LEA, which is a little bit different. Um, it's going to be studying the biological response of yeast to the lunar environment. And, and through that, measuring the radiation levels at the lunar surface. Um, there's an imaging um, radiometer that's going to be uh, making measurements on the mineralogical and thermal physical uh, properties of the lunar surface. A flux magnetometer, which is characterizing the vector field of the moon, both at low latitudes and on the surface. And a seal, which is characterizing the chemical response of the regolith to the landing of the lander. So um, I invite you to. Uh, Reach out to me if you have any questions. I'd be happy to talk about the science that Eclipse is doing. Thank, Thank you. you very much, Maria.